I remember. Well, I remember a lot of things. It's no wonder the spell had to be so powerful. He took my entire life from me. I remember the forest, the Anarin Glade, the ancestral home of my family. I remember being young and uncomplicated, playing in the streams running down the mountains, and staying up to watch the fairy rings glimmer in the dappled moonlight through the leaves. I remember my mother. I remember the way her hair shifted with every new season. I remember the way she sang, like running water, and the way she laughed, like wind through trees. I can still picture her face in my mind, clear like I just saw her. I remember the fire. I smelled it before I saw it. I came running down the steps and outside to hellish orange light shining through the trees. The bells weren't ringing, the alarms not tripped. Someone had killed all the ranger guards, and there was no one left to warn the families and children still sleeping in their beds when the armies of Baldur's Gate came up the mountainside. When I found my mother, she was... I was so distraught, I could barely move. Barely breathe. I was weeping so bitterly that I didn't even notice when they came up from behind me and grabbed me by both shoulders, dragging me away, leaving my mother's corpse to molder and my forest to burn to ash. And I remember him, standing there, just outside the borders of our glade, staring at me with the same disdain he'd always had for me. I screamed at him. I cursed him in every language I knew. I demanded to know why he'd done this, why he killed so many people. He didn't answer. My father ordered my hands bound, threw me in the back of a wagon, and stole me away to Baldur's Gate. When he couldn't get me to cooperate, when I threatened to kill myself rather than do what he asked of me, to lay with the woman he'd picked out for me, he took the only thing I had left. He took my memories. And now here we are. You know the rest of the story. I'm not going to abandon you in the middle of this quest. Of course I won't. I know this is bigger than me, but there's something important you need to understand. I'm not forgetting this. I'm not forgiving this. The next time I see my father, I am going to kill him. Before he left, uh, Escher bought out a second room uh, for you, for you four, because there's only one bed per room in these establishments. Uh, and he lets you make up your own mind as to how you want to divvy yourselves up. I assume Selwyn and Ariazes probably are against the idea of sharing a bedroom. After a fight? <laughs> no, nah, just, crazy. Just a guess. Oh, shit, Rick. I don't even know that happened. Uh, no, you don't. Amber's right. gonna be like, hey, Sal, you wanna bunk up with me? You seem like you're a little sad today. <laughs> um, <laughs> I could sing traditional halfling songs. We have a lot of them. You know what, Nyla? I, I want to hear those instead. You wanna hear my halfling song? I do. You've never wanted to hear my halfling songs before. She's looking suspiciously Take the offer and let us, let us be together. She, like, pushes her away. idea. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I mean, I guess it's just gonna be—it's gonna be a lot of singing. Oh, that's, that's what you want. <laughs> Ariadne is just like before she can even finish the sentence, is like steering Nyla out the door. Like, right, exactly. Let's She's go. like push, 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 push. Let's go. Yeah, I love uh, singing. Let's go. Uh, so as you are doing, as she's doing that, uh, Selwyn, so you realize that uh, Sassy isn't in this room. <gasps> uh oh. Yeah. What possible trouble could they be getting up to? Stress stealing. <laughs> Well, I mean, they With don't no have, legs? they have no legs, one arm, and only part of a rib cage. So stealing oh, no. a dress. That wouldn't stop Nyla. Oh, no. <laughs> I mean, that's Nyla's already short, true, though. But... <laughs> uh, so where does Selwyn first look? I mean, under the bed and the closet are obvious because, like, blah! <laughs> yeah, that is, that is a known tactic of sassy. Uh, <laughs> you check under the bed. Nope. 
You look in the closets and the armoire. Nope, not there. Fuck. Uh, it takes you, like, you start searching the more desperate places, like, you start peeling up a loose floorboard, you, you know, <laughs> you look in shelves, maybe? Can she climb into shelves? Uh, and just as you are really starting to get worried, uh, you come outside the door, and Sassy is walking up the steps and down the hallway, uh, wearing a very fancy top hat, and with their entire skeleton. Oh. <laughs> oh. Sassy? Oh, uh, hey. Where'd you get- I just kind of gesture to all of them. Uh, they look down at themselves and then back up at you. Don't ask questions you don't want the answer to. I really do, though. I found it, if you must know. (laughs) On whom? That's not important. I think it is. I, the great Bombo, master wizard and keeper of the all-seeing stones, deserve nothing less than a full skeleton. So I got one. Go to your room right now, Missy. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. The... You can't tell reaction. me what to do. You're not my real dad. <laughs> <laughs> oh, by the way, Sassy has a new ability. <laughs> Fun. Bone chime. Sassy or a creature allied with Sassy may strike their rib bone as a reaction and force the outcome of any attack roll, saving throw, or ability check within 50 feet of Sassy to be a natural one. This ability can be used once per long rest. Oof. Gotta start using this shit. I know, know, right? You've never used any of Sassy's abilities. Sassy's never around in a fight! (laughs) Well, whose fault is that? Yours. You're the necromancer. You're the necromancer. If you want Sassy in a fight, you have to just tell them. (laughs) Uh, so yeah, Sassy, like, sashays past you. They also have a very dapper top hat. It's it's not entirely clear where they got the top hat. Um, but they sashay past you and storm into their room like a huffy teenager. And you no- that's when you notice the, the magic that's now on their new bones. Yeah. Um, as soon as they're in the room, I, like, close the door and I start, like, poking and prodding and trying to figure out what the hell is going on. Ouch, don't- hands off the merchandise. Shut up, unless you're gonna tell me who gave it to you. I gave it to myself. Did you not hear the part about how I'm a master wizard and keeper of the all-seeing stones? Yeah, bullshit. I am a famous- famous and powerful wizard! (laughs) And I met the Queen of Waterdeep. (laughs) Um, there's another scene I would like to get to. Ariazis. Yes. Um... You are say you are splitting your room with Nyla, right? Because mm-hmm. yes. you're now extremely interested in halfling drinking songs, right? I just you know she's very interested in this, singing. This and brand dancing, new you know. interest in right. a. We've moved on to ninety nine bottles of beer on the wall. <laughs> That's a lot of beer. Do you really? We're need only that much beer? we're only at seventy. <laughs> wow. So much beer. <laughs> just wait, it gets better. It is at this point that I would gently remind you, out of character, perhaps you can manufacture, like, she looks d- vaguely off to the side and looks at Lishiga. Mm-hmm. And remembers. Mm-hmm. A thing about Lishiga. Yeah. And hey, perhaps... <laughs> perhaps we can, like, you know, we can always sing the whole night. I totally love that. That's cool, but, uh... Do you not want to hear about the 68 bottles of beer on the wall? You know, I'm sure that the bottles of beer are going to be on the wall unless somebody smashes them. I'm not really that familiar with this song, but I, I, maybe they stay there. I don't, I don't really know. But they don't. Spoiler: They don't stay on the wall. That's okay. We can end this one. <laughs> We're just gonna do the sheep song next. So I'm sorry. What, what did you have going on? At 65, um, the song takes a dramatic left turn. <laughs> <laughs> right. Suddenly, there's sheep on the wall. <laughs> <laughs> Suddenly, there's a. It's not unusual. <laughs> right. Oh my god. But yeah, she like looks at Nyla and like looks at her staff and she's like, "Do you want to hear something really cool?" Yeah, I mean, I'm always down for hearing something really cool. What's up? You see that staff that I always carry? Yeah, the really boring piece of wood. Where are we going with this? It's okay. It's first of all rude. It's not boring. My father gave it to me. But anyway, it's, it's, all pieces of wood are boring. You're family is boring anyway <laughs> what cold <laughs> never even met my family They're loved she's like no wait no i don't know your family sorry that's the first thing i could think of anyway <laughs> um 
So you see how there are like three flowers that come off the top? Yeah, you see those? Yeah. Yes, there are three flowers on your boring piece of wood. Right. They're magical flowers. Magical? Is that? She like leans in. Is well, that like I code mean... code for shrooms? <laughs> no, not that kind of magical. If you is want it, me to make you drugs, drugs, I can do that later. <laughs> you can make me drugs? I can grow thing anything you want. I mean, anyway. I guess I guess we've already rated this podcast explicit, so sure, why right. not? <laughs> the druid grows shrooms for Nyla to do in her recreational we'll have, time. We'll have the druid in the rogue get blasted episode. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like a really good time, actually. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, she's like... So I got it from my father, and I've never tested it, but according to Qatar, each flower can answer any question that you ask it truthfully. Natalie gets, like, super serious for a moment. How, how long have you had that staff? I've had it the whole time. You've had it the whole time? Yep. The, ho- the whole time? Mm-hmm. The entire... Like, like even when we were trying to figure out what the fuck was going on, that, that time you had it yep. then? That time too. Mm-hmm. Great, great. Uh, could you just answer a couple uh, questions? Not staff questions, just general personal questions. Oh, yeah, okay, general personal questions. Go yeah. ahead. I'm uh, ready. What the fuck is wrong with you? <laughs> <laughs> Ariati's like blinks, like, uh. Well, you, I've never actually tested it, so I'm not really sure. What? So, so you were just like, oh, I just don't think it's worth giving it a try. I'm just going to carry on a magical fucking staff to answer mystical questions, and we have all the questions, and just, you know, eh. Eh, eh. I mean, there's only. Was that three. is that an accurate summation of your thought process? I, kind of, but not really. Okay, listen. It's there's an accurate summation of your thought process. There's only three flowers on the staff. Uh huh. That you means only three of, questions. You can't think of even one real important question. I can think of more than three. That's the problem here. You have okay. to narrow it down. But we've had so many questions. Exactly, and this entire time. So I, many. I know. Why so wouldn't many. you even tell somebody about this? I'm you telling you now. You're carrying around a born piece of wood. <laughs> okay, this is why I'm telling you now. We could perhaps <laughs> ask it a question. Well, and... yeah, don't. We're going to ask it a fucking question. <laughs> that the others don't have to know about. <laughs> what? What? Why? But we're just testing it. I don't know what's going to happen. Why All... would we... All Not Katara tell- said was, oh, if you ask her the question, then it's going to answer truthfully, but I don't really know what the, you know, fine print of that spell is. Well, we don't know until we try it out. That's true. That's okay, true. but we should get Sal and and sell. Oh, man, that's confusing. Uh... <laughs> that is confusing. <laughs> I mean, we should. That's true. I mean, Salvador has a lot going on, and I'd rather not see Solon right now. Why? Oh, that's right. You weren't there for that. For mm. what? We kind of had a fight. Wait, I was only gone for like forty-five minutes. Yeah, that's all. That's all it takes, really. You know. Oh, good God! Every time with you two, I swear to. I don't even have time to deal with this. I don't. Uh, okay, you got a magical staff that answers questions, and we got to try it out. I think is is the core piece here that we yes. got to figure out what's going on. I I agree with that. And mm-hmm. we're we're later going to talk about your stupidity with uh, with Selwyn, but that's we don't have time. One crisis <laughs> at a time. <laughs> Did we? So wait, you guys said I passed Shemeshka on the way in, and she looked real uh, smug. self satisfied. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Ariazes makes like a really ugly face. I don't, I mean, what, what the fuck happened? Like, she was, you guys said that she was talking to you. What, what happened? Did she, I know she's like a question person. Did you ask her any questions? We did. Okay. She has steep prices. That's fair. Well, so what questions did you not get a chance to ask her, maybe? And we can talk to your staff? I don't know how this is going to work. This is going to look real dumb. I I know. I, we ha- I guess we have to take the flower and whisper into it. I mean, I'm a druid. I we talk have to flowers to anyway, but... We have to talk to a fucking fl- Oh, God. Yes, each flower. It's one question per flower. You have to talk to them individually, Nyla. Oh, well, excellent. This is just making my night. <laughs> you know, like, pluck the flower, whisper fucking a question into it, talk nicely to it. I mean, I'm not doing that. You're doing it. I'm not going to fucking talk to a flower. What if somebody saw me? I wouldn't, I wouldn't be able to sell my face on the street again. You're too short. No one would see you. 
<laughs> no one sees your face anyway. <laughs> You're all the way down there. <laughs> Oh my god. That's what, that's what makes stealing so easy. You can't even reach the top of the staff. What are you talking about, Nyla? I can, she's like jumping for it now. <laughs> uh. Anyway, anyway. Well, we, ha- we got so many questions. I mean, we don't yeah. know anything. We don't know like where to go in the Feywild. Well, I guess we can ask your father where to go in the Feywild. Mm. But he would know we don't that. know. I mean, what was going on? Like, who hired... Right. The first this is what we asked. We asked her. She said something was coming. That was the Gollum. Surprise! Okay, yeah. <laughs> we asked her that already. And then asked her what what she was contracted to do. Those are the two questions. Okay, well, what did she say? She sent the succubus, you know, the one that you walked up to and then kissed and then immediately fell over. Uh, oh, well, you know what? We all learned a valuable lesson that day. Exactly, not right. not trusting half-dressed women. So, right, and fine. also she helped build all the constructs that you know we fought so far. So that's interesting. Great. Yeah. Great. So did she tell us who who hired her? We didn't ask that question, but she said his. That's all we know. His contracts. I don't know who he is. Well, I feel like we probably know the answer to that. Do we Especially know? after Sal got his memory back, it was it's Sal's father. It's got to um, be right. Are you sure? I mean, it, I, I mean, I'm not yes, sure about that's... anything because I swear to God, two weeks ago I was just planning on how I was going to buy my mansion, and now I'm just trying to figure out how we're going to go to the fucking Feywild, which is not a sentence I thought I would ever say out loud. So, no, I'm not sure. Right. I mean, that's a possibility, a very good possibility, but we don't know. So that I was thinking about asking that one first, like, who is he? What? Who contracted Shmeshka? Okay. Well, I guess we gotta. We gotta try out this fucking. Why would we do that? But the the next question we gotta add, we gotta bring in the team. We can't just yes, do this exactly. Two of us. Right, definitely. But the trying out that that can be just here. Okay. We can tell them later what happened. Okay. I don't. This is a weird situation that's going on right now. You and I being confidants is real weird. But okay. Uh... <laughs> the two chaotic neutrals. <laughs> well, why don't I guess do your hippie nonsense? hippie nonsense yeah do, whisper into a flower or whatever you do i don't know okay i guess i'll ask friendship it. real good i don't know what you fucking druids do <laughs> all right so what do you do Nile ariazis describe it for us paint a word picture a word picture yeah she kind of like she first of all doesn't like nyla's uh description of it she's like i'm not gonna kiss a flower but then she like goes over to the staff which is you know just leaning on the wall all innocently and slowly picks one of the white flowers from the top and then looks at nyla and then looks back at the flower and asks it like puts her mouth puts it close to her mouth like Low is this thing? Okay. Uh, <laughs> yes, and then you waste the question. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, okay. Who contracted Shmeshka? Um, luckily, this flower can sense context. Um, I was going to say that was a very big question. <laughs> yeah, because a lot of people have contract- contracted Shemeshka over the years, uh, you'd right. be willing to bet. Uh, but it, it is able to sense the context of what you're asking and knows the root of the question. Ha! Fl- plant puns. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> For a minute, nothing happens, although you can feel some magic happening around the flower. Uh, and after a moment, you hear it whisper back to you in a very faint voice. Baphomet. Oh. Did, it, did you hear anything it, from over there, Nyla? Uh, no, work? she wouldn't have heard anything. Yeah, it would right. really be you. It looks right. like you just talked into a flower and nothing happened, so... It it has a very, very small voice. <laughs> yeah, she looks at Nyla and is like, Well, the flower said, Baphomet. Baph- well, that's not uh, Porter. Well, well, actually, I don't know if that's not Porter. Hmm. Baphomet? Have you ever heard that name? Roll, I've never heard that religion name. or arcana, both of you, whichever's higher. Right, I was like <laughs> tiefling, but I don't know. <laughs> and that's a natural four, ladies and gents. Yay! She's like, I don't know. Oh uh, well, this would be very, very far out of a wizard's, or out of a druid's wheelhouse, anyway. Um, Nyla, it takes you a minute 
uh, like you've definitely heard the name Baphomet. You're not 100% sure where, but it definitely rings a bell. And after a moment of thinking, you remember, Baphomet is a demon lord. He is one of the most powerful creatures that exists in the Abyss. He's not a god, but he's about as close to a god as it, as you can get. Gee, I'm, I'm thinking, it sounds real familiar. Baphomet. Oh, fuck me. Uh, oh, you know the name. That's a demon. That's a demon lord. Oh He's got God. a real scary headdress. <laughs> Those are That's not a headdress, my friend. Those are antlers. He's yeah. got a real scary set of antlers. <laughs> that appear to be also maybe teeth. This is not good. <laughs> uh, things um, you know about Baphomet with a 16. Uh, he is the... Like I said, he's technically not a god, but to a minotaur, he is basically a god. Uh, he lives in um, the Lictian, which is a layer of the abyss that is also known as the Endless Maze. Uh, he okay. has cults of his own, um, although most cults uh, that are aligned for chaotic evil entities, like, they're not super well organized, you know, emphasis on the chaotic part. <laughs> uh, but notable features of the cult of Baphomet include the worship of insanity, the the fetishization of mazes and and uh, and labyrinths. It's not it's not good. Like if 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 Baphomet is somehow involved in this, uh, that is no bueno. So he's not the same level as Bashaba, but he's like close. He's pretty close, yeah. Okay. Like if you if you put them in a fight against each other, there's a good chance that they would be able to go pretty toe to toe. Gotcha. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, Nyla's like ashen, and she's like, "This is real not good. This is not good. Why would why would a de- why would a demon from the abyss want Sal to marry and have babies with the succubus? What what why?" Ariasu's like has nothing like she's just listening to the explanation like what Nyla knows about it and like just becoming more and more serious and like uh. well I have to admit it your born staff was actually very helpful so thank you yeah (laughs) even if the flower whispering thing was still kind of weird yeah Uh, so you still have two flowers you do not have to use them up right away if you do not want though Uh, but it's up to you it's your fucking staff your character yeah, no, I was only gonna, like, do the testing, yeah, with Nyla, so I'm not gonna ask anymore right now. We can, we, we gotta talk, we gotta talk to Sal and Sal Wayne. We gotta talk to them. Yeah, this is, this is really important. That is, yeah, extremely <laughs> important. I don't really know what to do with this, but I mean, that's, again, this is just the whole situation. I don't know what to do with any of this, like, weird fucking artifacts and other planes of existence, but <laughs> I'm, I'm really not equipped for this. Um, you can... You can do that now, although you're going to have plenty of opportunity to do it later. Um, did you this say something? Lot. You said you wanted to go shopping, right? I'm going. I'm going shopping. Tomorrow. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, you're going to have time to do that um, after <clears throat> after checkout. Uh, yeah, I mean, tomorrow it's morning. Like still the middle of the night. <laughs> what time is checkout? Can I sleep in? <laughs> no, it's like 10 a.m. You got to get out. Motherfucker. <laughs> Ooh, Ooh. Ariazis gets to wake you up. Ooh. Oh, shit. <laughs> this is going to be interesting. This is going to be interesting. <laughs> Sometimes I regret setting up these things. <laughs> this running joke is going to get funnier every time. Oh, my God. Um, so. Fuck. Before you guys get to shopping, and I will give you the opportunity to shop. Ariazis, how do you want to do it? I'm dead asleep. I'm very tired. <laughs> you are dead asleep. Oh my god, this is going to be so funny. I was like, I couldn't wake you up as a bear. <laughs> <laughs> is it that worth my, wasting a wild shape? Yes, it is. <clears throat> is it a waste of wild shape? You know, I can do it twice. It's fine. <laughs> Nyla, you wake up and there's a bear over you. Ah! I throw a dagger at it. <laughs> roll, right. roll an attack. Oh, That's thankfully that was a low roll. <laughs> does a 12 hit your AC as a bear? Um, yes, it does. <laughs> Unless Sal's so not the only one subjected <laughs> to this abuse. <laughs> Let's see here. <laughs> you take seven damage, seven dagger damage as a bear. <laughs> Nyla keeps screaming and backs away <laughs> and tries to hide under the bed. <laughs> There's a bear! There's a- somebody help! There's a bear! 
Ariazis turns back and she's like, okay, stop it. You are the ah! Ariazis, there was a bear! Go get it! It was the bear, shut up. You were the you were you were the Why were you a bear? Because you always stab Salvador Why every would, morning. Why would you do that? The door opens and Salvador looks and is like, what the hell are you doing in here? You she know, I turned a into bear! a bear! Yeah, because you always get stabbed, Sal, so I, you know, took some precautions. Do you still have a dagger, like, in your shoulder? No, she probably pulled it out. <laughs> okay. Technically, the damage she takes as a bear doesn't translate to a... Oh, okay. Right, right, right exactly. Yeah. Well, that's good. If it's going to happen one way, it should be. Right. <laughs> she's, like, breathing heavy. She's like, just do Just... Oh, my God. Oh, Okay. Now we're going to have everyone in the party, including Sassy and Stormy, wake Nyla up and see what happens. <laughs> we're going to make this into a running <laughs> goose. God, I hope so. <laughs> she, like, brushes herself off. She's like, I'm sorry that I stabbed you. So we're also- sort of watching this and this is like, checkouts in half an hour, guys. <laughs> Good. He's By the way, he is speaking Elvish. Nyla looks at uh, Ariazis and she's like, I caught, like, three of those words half hour. You are almost, you are almost fluent in Elvish by yeah. this point. Yeah. By this point, yeah. You can add it onto your character sheet soon. I have, the feat that I gave you was, um, anytime oh, you try yeah, to speak. Oh, yeah, that I have to roll. <laughs> yeah, you need to roll a 1d20, and on a 1, you misunderstand something horribly. Okay, there we go. Okay. <laughs> right. Oh. So she's um, like, okay, a half an hour. Yeah. Okay. You seem, you seem a little subdued, to, uh, Sal, are you? Salvador leaves. Oh, yeah. okay. <laughs> Ariazi's like, nudges Naya like, just leave him alone. Uh, I'm happy. I, I, I'm going shopping. Uh, but bef- like I said, one more quick scene before you go shopping. Um, so you have to check your horses out of the stable uh, as well as, uh, bef- as at the same time as you leave. Um, and you left Stormy in the stable as well because where else are you going to fucking put him? And like, <laughs> right. in fairness, the stable hand didn't even blink. Like you had this twelve foot tall gray renders. Like, can we put him in the stable? And like, he didn't even like. He's like, yeah, okay. And he just immediately wow. took him. Uh, so you you assumed it was all going to be fine. You go to check Stormy out, however, and the stable hand looks very, very angry. And he says, you're the ones with the render? Yes. Nope. <laughs> this is very important. We, he, one of you, you're going to have to pick an answer. Ariazi's going to be like, yeah, he's mine. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Well, in that case, you owe me a thousand gold. <laughs> what did he do? What happened? He killed two horses and destroyed half the stable. Yeah, that sounds like something he would do. Mm-hmm. The stable hand is glaring at you, waiting for you to pay up. Nyla, do you have a thousand gold? <laughs> I absolutely do not. Excuse me, I don't know these people. <laughs> Nyla. <laughs> Nyla begins to walk away. I grab her scruff. <laughs> yeah. Ah! But unhand me, you villain! So I was like, Nyla, just pay the man. I don't have five hundred gold. A thousand gold. You do between the four of you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. How much did we have with us? I believe it was 500 each. Mm-hmm. So you two can pay it because you were the ones who did the. Excuse me? That's not my pet. I didn't agree to bring. I have a nice pet. It's a raven. It just flies around. Mm. I have 500. I need one more. 500. <laughs> Come on, Nyla. Give half and I'll give the other half. Uh, wh- why would I do that? Why would I do that? Salvador is sort of staring at you, Nyla, just sort of in wondering silence. He has definitely changed, like, his whole demeanor has changed a lot since he got his memories back. He's a lot quieter now. That's disturbing. Mm -hmm. I can make you a very nice dress, Nyla, or whatever it is you need. This is ridiculous. (laughs) She hands you 250 (laughs) gold, and she counts every fucking piece out. The stable hand is standing there with his arms crossed over his chest. He's like, and perhaps next time don't bring this thing into a city? Yeah, yeah, well, yeah he's hard to deal with. We'll try. Sorry. Yeah, he does not look like sorry is going to cut it. Yeah, of course not. <laughs> that's all she's got, though. And that's all she's going to say to him. So sorry for the inconvenience. Um, Keep it. Giant pets. Giant evil pets. This is what happens. He's not technically evil. He's just- he ate a bunch of horses. He is the That's epitome just of what cha- they do. He is the epitome of chaotic neutral. Yeah. That was like, not evil, just, you know, chaotic. All right, you gather storm, you pay the man a thousand gold, make sure you deduct that 250 gold each from your your individual pools. Mm-hmm. Uh, and 
Yep, you collect Stormy, and Stormy does not seem the least bit remorseful. Of it is. Not. It's not entirely clear that he understands what he did. Yeah. Nyla spends the rest of the time glaring at Ariazes and Stormy. Ah! That is not helping. Because if your, your pet screaming is making things worse. She does kind of have a point, not, uh, Ariazes. It's not really a pet. I know that. He's going to follow me anyway, though. That's just how it's going to work. Salvador says, I don't know how to stop it. Salvador said, if you really wanted to, I'm sure you could think of a way to fix it. And Elvish still. He has not spoken common a lot since uh, the memories thing. That's true. I probably could think of a way. Why don't I do that while you guys go shopping? All right. Uh, so what do you guys... Uh, Salvador doesn't particularly need anything. Um, but... Uh, he, let's say you probably agree on some like meetup point, like a cafe somewhere. They have mm-hmm. cafes in Waterdeep. Sure, shut up about it. <laughs> but I wasn't gonna say they didn't. <laughs> You're gonna wait outside this cute little cafe with your giant fucking monster. <laughs> uh, let's say Ariazes and Salvador uh, are gonna <laughs> wait for you outside there, mm-hmm. and because uh, I don't, Ariazes, do you need anything? Unless you need something shopping. Um. Yeah. No, she doesn't need anything. She's gonna okay. try to work on. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so Salvador and Ariazes will go wait in this cafe while the two of you go shopping. Um, so yeah, this is Waterdeep. This is probably the best place in Faerun to go shopping. Uh, what do you want specifically? I'm buying new armor. That's really all I want. Okay, what kind of armor? Uh, studded leather. Studded leather armor? Okay, uh, I know there's a price for that in the player's handbook. Uh, there just... is, I have it in front of me. Okay, good. So yeah, just deduct that from your gold and you can definitely, definitely get some studded leather armor. Excellent. What about you, Selwyn? What do you need? Double checking. Hang on. Got to check my proficiencies to make sure I can actually take the thing. Um, I guess I didn't actually need anything. I just liked the idea of shopping. <laughs> is there anything, since you two are uh, out together, yeah, is there anything Nyla and Selwyn want to talk about while they're out doing shopping? Yes, absolutely. Oh, actually, I also want to get two more things while I'm out there. I want to get a crowbar and a grappling hook. Ooh, okay. Yeah. Nice. Just subtract the appropriate amount of gold. That's fine. Okay. Um, as we're, like, walking between stores, Nyla, by the way, is, like, haggling. She's probably not, like, successfully doing it, but she's doing it anyway. Um, um, I'll, actually, I'll actually let you roll for it if you want to see how successful you are. Ooh. Excellent. Yes, please. <laughs> I, I will, like, I will allow for a discount. Um, okay. That would be what persuasion, is... I believe. Persuasion. Oh my oh, god. Oh, wow. Uh, that's a 27 for our listeners at home. Um, yeah, with a 27, half off everything. Yes! Excellent. Half off my 2GP grappling hook. I'm so psyched. <laughs> <laughs> you pay one Well, gold. I know the, the, le- the, the sunny leather armor is pretty expensive. Yeah, the sunny leather armor is going to be the thing that gets me. So that's and, awesome. Yes! And if it's an odd number, just round down. Who cares? Okay, thank you. There's, there's like a, there's like a, a rate. There's like some, hot, some amount of electron pieces per gold piece, but we don't care about that, so... <laughs> this is not a math podcast, you guys, so just <laughs> shut up about it. <laughs> We're all queer and bad at math, except for right. Amber. Exactly. So Nyla still has like a shit ton of money. So I like the idea that she's going in here and grab like she's she's like arguing with people over like two gold and negotiating it down to one because she's so <laughs> just because she can. She's used to it. Yeah. Right. She's like, I know you said this crowbar is two gold, but I don't know. It doesn't look like that good of a crowbar. We can all agree it's kind of a shitty crowbar, right? Like, <laughs> like it's been it's seen the block a couple times, been what around. A, what you a know? good use of resources and time. <laughs> <laughs> um but as we're walking and she's like oh, she's holding her purchases and she's very proud of herself um she leans over and she i think she's probably noticed that selwyn is quiet and she's like so did uh did you and sal get around to talking about anything last night he's no um i was a little distracted with uh sassy but sassy oh. sassy behind you says i'm fine shut up <laughs> You do, I thought, did you spend the night putting Sassy back together? Because, yeah, I could see that nope. being real time consuming. What? Nope. <laughs> she managed that herself and won't tell me how. It's fine. Don't worry about it. Sassy, that is an excellent top hat. Have I told you that recently? <laughs> Thank you. I agree. <laughs> I kind of nudged Nyla, like, keep going. You complimented her. Maybe you can actually find out how. Oh, um... So, you know, where might one, so much as me, you know, I'm always in the market for a good top hat. Where where might I find something like that? 
I don't know, a tailor or something? What do I look like, your yeah. personal shopper? Shut up. You do a little bit, to be honest. My personal <laughs> shopper, they look very similar to you. Just, you know, <laughs> very skinny. So. Didn't she get you that gold cloak way back when? Come on, give her your sword. I'm still waiting on that dress. I tried so hard, Tassie. I tried so hard, but your master here. Blocked. And you know a bunch of people would not let me. Hey, you know what's not a dress? Me. You know what's not a dress, Nyla? Trying. Trying is not a dress. <laughs> While that statement is technically correct. Okay, look, the next I can't do it in the city because I have a feeling that I'm gonna get in trouble if I try to go steal a dress right now. Cry me a uh, river. I, w- I, I will. Very shortly, because we're about to be in a fucking Feywild. But okay, okay. Next, I promise you, I will get you a dress. But again, the top hat does look very nice. I know it does. Thank it you. It really compliments your cheekbones. You are correct. <laughs> yeah, it's just your eye sockets, in particular, very fetching in combination with the shadows. Sassy, I, don't, I don't know what it is, just brings it out. Sassy tilts their hat at a jaunty angle, and it <laughs> is even more a, more wonderful than before. <laughs> <laughs> oh, goodness. I don't know. I feel like you could use a cravat. I could get you I, a new cravat. I know what you're doing, and you're not getting anything out of me. We're not trying to- what do you- what do you mean? What do you mean? You know, I could just dispel the spell that's on you. Oh, that went from zero Holding to sixty. together? Real fast? Real fast, zero to sixty. You want me to start hanging off your shoulder and muttering into your ear again? Not really, but I'm a little concerned about how you got your body back. Cry me a river! It starts dancing <laughs> in the street. <laughs> a cane appears out of nowhere. <laughs> Nyla's like again. laughing helplessly in a corner, <laughs> <laughs> like just cackling. Salvador is being very, very quiet. He's not talked about anything. He's just sort of. Uh, I imagine you're both like, like you can't go inside the cafe because you know Sassy would destroy it. Uh, but you are both waiting outside. Mm-hmm. It's a nice day in Waterdeep. Cold, but you know, bright. Um. Yeah, it was like she wants to tell him about what they learned last night, but is it a good time? Who knows? She's just going to point out the weather like, it's a pretty nice day today in Elvish. He looks up. Yeah, I guess. I mean, probably not great if you just got bad memories back, but you know, not all things considered, not a bad day. You proud of that transition? Was that a good transition in your head? (laughs) <laughs> it wasn't no the weather really. isn't good if you're very sad about getting memories back <laughs> <laughs> yeah i'm not not great at transitions no or... you're really not yeah yeah so uh why are you being such a jerk he kind of looks at you i'm being a jerk you're, yes. you're, you're asking that of me after i just saw you and selwyn fight like cats and dogs Yes, but that's not about you. Says, well, I'm sorry that you think I'm being a jerk, Ariazes. It has been a little tough, remembering the murder of everyone that I've ever known and loved, and the burning of the forest that I grew up in. I'm sorry if that's been inconvenient for you. She makes a face. You know as well as I do that to bring fire into the forest is forbidden. I may not have lived there, but that's still horrifying to hear and i would expect a little more compassion than just being called a jerk but then again you have never been very good at compassion have you ariazis despite my best efforts she looks at him and she's like i could try but just for that i don't think i want to anymore you know spite isn't a very good reason to do anything yeah what the fuck would you know about spite he doesn't look particularly wounded uh he he was the one that went in and got you all, I don't know, fantasy coffee? Do they have coffee in? Yeah, who knows? Yeah, sure. They, they have coffee. He bought you coffee. <laughs> but it's fantasy coffee. Fantasy coffee. Yeah, fantasy coffee, yeah. And he says, all right, well, I hope that, and I do mean this sincerely, I hope that this path of spiteful cruelty works out for you. Because so far nothing else has. She's sort of like takes a moment to inhale and then like looks at him like it looks like the when she was talking to him before like you could see in her eyes that she was really pissed but then like after she takes a beat you can see that it's sort of like dissipated who knows where she shoved that i don't know (laughs) 
probably into a, into the dark corner where she keeps all her other negative emotions. Exactly, all the other <laughs> bad memories. She just sort of like collects herself and she's like, that's a fair point. As you heard from Shemeshka, it makes her happy and demons like her the more miserable I am, but I don't want to be that anymore. Salvador is silent for a minute. He takes a sip of his fantasy coffee. Sure. <laughs> this is a fantasy Starbucks. Right. You, you know, it happens in Waterdeep. Great. Can you guys pick me up with some of those gluten-free, uh, what are they? <laughs> yeah, I feel like they already got your orders. I feel like they already got your orders. They're oh, like, excellent. oh yeah, we'll just order for you. And then when you come, we'll, we'll finish up lunch. <laughs> uh, he says, I remember... Um, when I was younger, my mother always used to tell me that, uh, that happiness was a choice, that, that it was something that you did deliberately. Uh, but having grown a little bit older and wiser, I don't think she was entirely correct. Uh, he says, sometimes there are pains that are just too intense to get over. Sometimes there's sorrow that has settled too deep into your bones. And he says... There's sometimes no other way past pain but to survive it. And he says, Ariazis, I am not trying to be cruel or dismissive when I say that you've had a long time with this pain. And at a certain point, it becomes diminishing returns. At a certain point, it does become a choice. You're going to have to let go. I know. He hugs you. She hugs him back. <laughs> the old Sal is not completely gone. Yeah. He's just sad. He says, well, and if you, even if you don't believe you can do it, you can borrow my faith in you. It's comforting to know that you still have faith in me. Um, all right. That's a nice little ending point right there. Mm -hmm. uh, you all eventually make it to the fantasy Starbucks. Uh, you, have, you have a fantasy macchiato. <laughs> Nyla's carrying a giant bag of shit. <laughs> not surprised Salvador's watching is like you know in retrospect we probably should have gone with him to make sure she didn't steal any of that she didn't oh, yeah. I didn't steal it I didn't steal a damn thing she says in Elvish <gasps> ooh Nyla I'm so proud of you your Elvish is really getting good <laughs> I mean for many things the Elvish and also the not stealing <laughs> and the cursing uh, the cursing was a special one I'm really proud of that Salvador um, readily admits, like, yeah, you can't, you can't learn a language and not learn how to curse. Like, I feel like that's yeah. a fundamental, a fundamental part of any language. Well, thank you for the macchiato. It's real good. Um, are we gonna... macchiato. <laughs> fantasy <laughs> are we gonna... macchiato. There's a distinction. Right, yes, I'm sorry. Course. Thank you for the fantasy macchiato and also the fantasy cake pop that I specifically requested. <laughs> I love that's those so cake funny. pops, though. Those things are so good. They're so good. <laughs> What's so um, Nyla turns to Ariazzi and she goes, so are we going to ride your very expensive pet out of this fucking city? Stormy, by the way, has been chewing on a, a cafe chair this entire time. Luckily, it's metal and it, it can't bend. So <laughs> you're not going to have to pay damages for this specific oh thing. Oh my god, I can't afford to, we can't afford this nonsense. We really can't. Um, yeah, 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 and she's like still speaking in Elvish, like, yeah, I've, you know, been thinking about that too. It was really expensive and also I didn't know he ate horses anyway <laughs> i mean there was sal and tones like there was that one time in the stables um where he tried to eat our horses oh yeah that's there right. was we probably should have seen that one coming mm -hmm. should we should we talk about our next steps because i don't really know where we're going i think there's a lot of conflicting stuff going around and also ariazis and i learned something very upsetting last night mm. what what um <laughs> So, I didn't know this, but apparently Ariazis has a magic staff that she can ask questions about. And Are you speaking you in Elvish, ask... by the way? Because if you are, I want you to roll that 1d20. Yes. I'm completely <laughs> yes. serious. I am definitely speaking in Elvish, because oh I'm trying God. to not let everybody know about it. Oh, fuck. Oh. <laughs> That's close, but nope, you're, you're still managing it. You, like, you, conjure a, you conjugate a verb incorrectly, but it's not so bad that they can okay. understand you. Anyway, continue. <laughs> so, she, she looks around and she goes, so I guess the question is... Well, I get the first the first thing we got to talk about is what what we learned because it's very upsetting. Uh, apparently, we asked the staff about who had contracted Shemeshka for the contract on on uh, Sal, and 
the staff said a name, Baphomet. Do y'all um, know who that is? Can I roll religion and arcana just to see if I know anything more than um, arcana? Or... Yeah, and I guess Sal can too. A uh, show off. <laughs> <laughs> a 20 and a 21. They're both like, oh yeah, we know. Uh, yeah, uh, with a 20 and a 21, you guys have definitely heard of Baphomet. Uh, demon lords um, rule over specific planes of the abyss. Like, the abyss is so called the abyss because it's infinite layers. Uh, a demon lord rules over one of the layers. Um, almost all demon lords are or can be warlock patrons. They almost all have cults of some kind. They are extraordinarily dangerous. Some of the most powerful creatures in the multiverse. Selwyn's ears, like, droop down and she turns white. Selwyn's like, fuck. What? Baphomet, you're sure? Well, yes. Ariazi, you're the one who heard the weird flower. Yes, it... <laughs> that's what it said. Says, well, that's not great. Doesn't yeah, it know. seems real real bad. Do you, Sal, I I know this, I know things have been tough, but do you... Did anything you learn? He Did shakes you any insight. He shakes his head. He's like, I've never had anything to do with Baphomet. Well, fuck. Uh, that raises a whole bunch of other questions, doesn't it? Now, Sal mm-hmm. says, I mean, Shemeshka, she should theoretically be from the abyss. Although, um, Ariazis, I'm not going to make you roll for this. Uh, you know that uh, while our cataloths are technically from the Abyss, Shemeshka specifically lives mostly in uh, Sigil. A place mm-hmm. where, I mean, I don't know if you've ever been to Sigil. Like, as her girlfriend, she might have taken you there a yeah, couple right. times. Because that's the idea, of, that's Shemeshka's idea of a meat cute. Like, taking you <laughs> to Sigil. Cute little demon date, yeah. <laughs> oh, God. Um, but she, like, even if she didn't actually take you to Sigil, you definitely know about Sigil. Mm-hmm. Uh, and you would know that she's a trade prince in Sigil, uh, the prince of the cross trade. Uh, so she, like, Shemeshka might theoretically consort with demon lords, but she doesn't live in the abyss anymore. Right. Yeah. So I think that she would mention that, like, well, she lives in Sigil and as far as I know, doesn't live in the abyss anymore. I just don't understand. How is this all coming together? I mean, there's a demon who's trying to get Sal to have babies with a succubus. There's... Sal flinches. Oh, I'm sorry. That's a great reminder. Yeah, thanks. So, sorry. I just, I'm sorry. I'm just trying to recap the no, situation. No, that's fine. That's fine. And how does that how does that map with the vestiges? Where Where is the connection? I just... We still don't even know what's up with Bashava. I just... We need more information. And I only have two more flowers, so we have to be very careful. It's the first time I've ever even used this Tower of the Staff. Yeah, thanks for the reminder that you had the whole fucking staff could have been asking questions the entire fucking time. You're just like, it's relevant information to share. Okay, so if your if your father or your mother gave you a thing that you said it was magical and could answer questions, would what would you do with it? I would like sell it. Used them right away. Exactly, you would sell it. You wouldn't even use it or ask it. I would have used it right away. Right, she wasn't asking you. She was asking me. Right. Oh, cool. We're not talking. Okay. Oh, were you answering the question, Selwyn? You look at, and then she like, without looking at Selwyn, like, see, at least somebody has sense. Like, you would sell it without using it. Of course, I didn't believe him when he told me, like, ooh, magical flowers. I'm like, okay, some weird druid shit, whatever. You're a weird druid. I don't. Know I know. I'm, I'm a weird druid. I'm even weirder than most other other druids. Okay. Well, I suppose this isn't really the point. Anyway, what? Just there's really only one question. Where do we go next? Salvador says, I guess it's a question of priority, right? We have to Mm -hmm. figure out what's the most important thing to do. And I feel like even knowing that Baphomet is involved, which he looks still looks a little shook that Baphomet's involved. Like, that's scary. Uh, Mm -hmm. He says, I still feel like the most important thing is making sure that Bashaba doesn't get any of the world pillars. Right. Because if that if that if that happens, Baphomet can't stop the end of the world. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. Do we even have any idea? So we know the Feywild. Do we know anything else about the, the world pillar on the material plane? Or is your, your mentor still looking into that cell lane? Yeah. Elminster was looking into it. Um, he has not reached out to you one. since. Uh, but you could write a letter. Like, if you want to do anything, like, this would be the best place to reach out to Elminster if you wanted to. Because, uh, mm-hmm, yeah. you know, it's Waterdeep. Like, it's a city. I feel like you should check in with him. 
Yeah, just to I make agree. sure. I'm also just concerned that maybe he's dead, just because a lot of people have been dying, and it's very concerning. Uh, so in like blanches at that. I'm like, sorry. Yeah, I'm cool. Not... Another reminder. Very sensitive. I'm very sorry. I'm trying. I really am. I Salvador pats your shoulder. <laughs> Ari- Ariazzi's pats your other shoulder, like <laughs> you too. Chaotic neutral fail. Uh, um, but yeah, I like. It would definitely, you could definitely send a letter or you could send a message spell. Although, you know, you know how Elminster is with message spells. He's going to blow through it immediately and not even notice. (laughs) Uh, So a letter might be a little bit better. Um, Yeah. And I don't know, maybe he might get back to you in time by the time you get out of the Feywild, perhaps. Who knows? (laughs) Who knows? The DM says who knows. It could be. (laughs) It would be very plot convenient. Yeah, I think so. Definitely. So, Wayne, can you send him uh, whatever your weird wizard shit is? And a letter. <laughs> <laughs> Nyla, do you not send letters? Why would who would I send letters to? Your family. Oh yeah, Friends? I do send to them. I usually send money. You don't include notes with the money. Why? Just anonymous parcels of money arriving in the mail. <laughs> Ariazu's like, yeah, that seems legit. So, so <laughs> whatever, like, up. suspiciously grimy. <laughs> the gold isn't always necessary. Like, there's, it's like it could be blood. Come You're not on. quite sure. <laughs> Literal blood money. Wow. <laughs> All right. Um. So you can it's been years. <laughs> uh, so, um, Val, if you want to. Like, if you want to send a specific, like, actually specifically write out the letter, uh, you can. Mm-hmm. If you don't, that's fine, too. I'll just uh, just let me know. You can do it uh, between Yeah, I think sessions. I'll do it in between sessions like I did with the letters to her family. Yeah. Just let me know. Just give it to me when, you, when you're finished with it. Yep. Um, okay, is there anything else anyone wants to do in Waterdeep? I mean, I'm really concerned that, like, I don't know, Shemeshka's tied up with this whole Sassy getting her body back, or that Sassy killed somebody to get her body back. I'm really fucking concerned about this. Why is nobody else worried about it? They've seen I'm a Sassy. Weird undead creature. <laughs> yeah, Sassy's been like this pretty much from the start. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you're you're the only one who's noticed the subtle escalation because everyone else is like, Yeah, it's a skeleton. It's it's right. it's lawful evil. I don't know what you were expecting. Yeah, it's right. like it's not it's not supposed to be like good, so I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> I mean, not, didn't buy anything. Not, I do. You know what? I stole um, Sal's hit or a pack at some point out of vengeance. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh yeah, the God. priest pack. He hasn't noticed it's gone yet. Right. She's. I think she's been feeling really guilty. So when she gets a quiet moment, she's gonna go over to him and she's just gonna like put tuck, it on the table, tuck it back into his bag without him noticing. Yeah. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Reverse pickpocket. Do I have to uh, real stealth? Yes. Or, Sleight of hand. It would be. Excellent. It would Can be, I do that? Um, yeah, it would be, you'd be trying to beat his passive perception, which is 15, so it shouldn't be too hard for you. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, 19 is higher than 15, that's true. <laughs> so yeah, you, you successfully slip it back into his bag without him noticing. Okay. <laughs> she, like, slinks away looking very guilty. <laughs> um, I feel like also sending a letter to our friends, even though they don't really want to know more about us. You know, letting them know that a uh, demon lord is involved would be oh, a the good Tremaine, idea. the Tremaine estate at all? Tremaine's. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they definitely were going to be, like, screening phone calls from you guys, but they'll probably get around to listening to the messages eventually. <laughs> I feel like, and correct me if I'm wrong, this is, maybe this is only how Esha feels like, he's like, he was in it because he loves gossip and he wants to know all the tea. But no, it's like there's like Shemeshka's involved and there's a cult and it's like I saved the world like two times already. Yeah, I want to <laughs> I want to enjoy my retirement with my husband. Like, I want to help him grow Rudimagus. specifically said that at some point where yeah. he was like, didn't I already fucking like, haven't I done enough? <laughs> I just fucking let somebody else handle this shit. It's more of a like, if we fuck up royally, at least somebody else knows about it. That's not wrong. Yeah. <laughs> Like that's literally all she's thinking. It's Just not send him a letter that says help. "open, open in case of world." <laughs> <laughs> right. Y'all head out of, uh, out of Waterdeep, uh, and it is not a particularly long walk back uh, from Waterdeep to the High Forest. Um, 
where are you guys going specifically? Mm -hmm. uh, the default location to go would probably be uh, to Qatar. I mean, that's my thinking, because we don't know anything that happened, so we need to know where to go. Like, he was supposed to ask for permission. We don't even know if he got it. That is mm -hmm. true. Mm -hmm. So I think that's that's my feeling. Yeah, that's what Ariazi's too. Be like, you know, the best option would be to go back to my father and, you know, tell him what we learned and figure out what he's learned. Uh, it is only a couple days and nights on the road. Uh, I would like everyone to roll perception for me oh. on one night. Oh! Hey. Some oh. not shit rolls <laughs> for once. Ariazis. Yes. Uh, it's it's your one night out. Um, you're you're right you're right at the edge of the uh of the high forest. Uh, and you are all, you know, you're on your bed rolls. You're you're asleep. Like you've you've been sleeping on the road for two or three nights now. You've done it before. You're used to it. Uh, and beside you, you notice a soft shimmer of magic, uh, and then quickly followed by silence. It's coming from like you, uh, Salvador. The way you're all sleeping, you're all sort of laid out on the ground. Uh, from left to right, it's Nyla, Selwyn, or actually, it would probably, let's not be honest, it would be Selwyn, Nyla, then you, then Salvador. <laughs> right. Nyla in the middle, yeah. To, yeah, to... <laughs> For the drama. Um, and the magic came from Salvador. Oh, boy. Um, She's gonna, like, blink and look at him. Uh, you look over in time and you see that... Uh, he has cast some magic over himself and it takes you a minute to identify what it is. Uh, you have dark vision though, so yeah. you, you can see very, very clearly. Uh, and, but it, it's still, it's not a spell that you can normally cast. Actually, maybe it is a spell you can cast. I don't know. Nope. Yeah, it like, it it's not a druid it. spell. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so it takes you, it takes you a couple minutes to figure out uh, what spell it is, but then eventually you realize that he's cast the spell silence over himself and you spend so much time, staring at it carefully studying it trying to figure out what the magic is that you realize he's shaking and you and slowly it follows you realize that the reason he cast silence over himself is so you couldn't hear him sobbing oh, oh no <laughs> that's gonna yeah hurt her heart a lot and uh um i don't know like how silence works <laughs> like yeah like she I, like nor like if you were a class that could cast it, I would totally just let you like copy and paste it for you. Yeah. But uh, because druids can't cast silence, the most you know about it is that it prevents sound from escaping. Something right. like that. Right. Yeah. Because she wants to like put a hand on his shoulder, but like, is there some sort of physical comfort? I mean, he did tell her that like he had faith in her, and you know, she wants to, and she got yelled at, so she wants to try to be good and better and compassionate now. So. She, yeah, she's going to try to take his advice and, you know, act more compassionate. So, yeah, she's going to try to reach out towards him, maybe. Uh, and... You definitely catch him off guard. Uh, the way silence works is that no, uh, for the duration, no sound can be created within or pass through a 20-foot radius sphere. Uh, he's, he didn't center it on himself because that would include all of y'all. He like, <laughs> kept it to the side so no one else would let on. Uh, but he def it definitely startles him enough uh, that he sort of uh, wrenches around uh, uh, and immediately uh, dispels the magic and he's like he's frantically like wiping at his face he's like sorry why are you apologizing I didn't mean I didn't want to disturb anyone well I just saw that you had cast I saw something and I saw that you were casting magic and I realized when I realized it was going on I figured now would be a good time to work on compassion like you mentioned before uh he is still sort of wiping at his face trying to compose to, to, trying, trying to compose himself to middling success like it's still really obvious that he's been crying he says uh well yeah that's this i appreciate the effort but you know sometimes there's just like i said sometimes there's just pain that's too deep nothing to do but wait it out i guess I don't think anybody would judge you for crying after all you've been through or think that you were disturbing them or being a nuisance. He says, no, but at all costs, I'd like to 
not interrupt anyone's sleep. One 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 person's interrupted sleep is enough. He says, it's really fine, Ariazis. Don't worry about it. And he lies back down. She's like not very convinced, but she can see that he doesn't really want to talk about it. She's like, okay. And she tries to go back to sleep herself. Uh, he definitely is not going to try to strike up conversation uh, after that. The rest of the trip to the High Forest is uneventful. Um, the next morning you are within range, uh, within a day's travel of, uh, of Qatar's little, little tree fort. Tree house! <laughs> tree fort, tree fort, tree fort. Mm-hmm. <laughs> are you gonna, are you gonna send a message like you did last time, or are you just gonna sort of appear? Well, not exactly like we did last time, because he said no, and I don't do that. I don't do non-consent things. Oh, yeah, he did, didn't he? Well, I guess we could show up and then just make him be like, ah, oh, Ari. You can do druid shit. Yeah, she can. Um... But also she <laughs> likes tormenting her father. <laughs> right. You know, let me have this. Like, <laughs> Let me make my father's life miserable. <laughs> anyway, yeah, so they just show up and, I don't know, bust. she knocks on the tree again and all, y'all are just like, fucking God, every time. All right, where is Qatar? Um, I would say this time he, like, he is at home because he's waiting. All right, the door opens. Qatar is standing in the doorway. Salvador, uh, Sassy in the back's like, Elfie man, we meet again. He, like, looks at Sassy and is like, oh, there's more of it this time. <laughs> and that, too. It's just, Ariazis, where do you get these things <laughs> Well, I found the necromancer in the bog. Right. <laughs> anyway, I've been waiting for you so you can all come inside. He's like looking at Sal a bit warily, like he doesn't know what how to act around him. Roll inside, Qatar. Woof. 23. Hey, 23. 23 Woof. to insight. Um, with that 23 to insight, Qatar, something significant has changed about Salvador. And the, it's only been like a week since you've seen him. He, there mm-hmm. is uh, definitely something, capital S, something going mm-hmm. on. I see things have changed. Then perhaps we can skip <laughs> most of this conversation. But first, you should all come in. Yeah, uh, Salvador heads inside. Yeah, is anybody hungry? <laughs> Stormy desperately tries Always. to get into the door and it does not work. <laughs> um... Yeah, I was like wondering if you cast something like just seal the door shut. Like, nope, you can't come in. Like, it's a giant beast. He's like, I don't, I don't really want to touch it. But he just kind of looks at Ariaz. He's like, can you, can you do something with, with that? Ah! Yeah, it, ah. it definitely cannot fit in the house, even if I would let it in. Um, yeah. So I guess that Ariazis is gonna, uh, I don't know, try to throw, like, pick up a branch and throw it. Like, go fetch. Stormy immediately runs after it. <laughs> All right, everybody inside. <laughs> this is this is not going to end well. This is not going to end well. <sighs> All right, uh, you all come inside. The door shuts behind you. Immediate banging. <laughs> <laughs> right. Nyla um, just marches in and sits down. They have a couch. There's a couch. Is there a yes. couch? Yes, there's I a couch. Down couch. On the couch. He's going to... Katara is, like, going to... Um, I guess, like, he wants to make sure you guys are comfortable, but, like, they're pressing matters. So it'd be like, I mean, after this, if you want tea or anything, I can give it to you, but no, he looks it's, at... it's fine. Yeah, he looks at Sal and he's like, did you remember? Salvador, um, in lieu of answering the question directly, says, did you go to the Glade? Yes. Um, Salvador says, then you know most of the story already. I had my hunches. I was told to stay here in case I was right. Salvador sort of um, averts his eyes like you were right. What? Ariazi's gonna be like <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like Nala's like what the fuck and Ariazi's like yeah yeah um hello other people in the room are here and then Katar's just like oh 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 yeah um so he's going to oh did he tell them? I forgot if he told them what he found. No he didn't did he? No, he did not. Right, that's right, because he was, you guys were doing questy stuff. Yeah, so he's going to, um, because Sal is there, he's going to try to not go into as much detail as possible, but 
you know, um, I went to the Enerin Glade as, you know, as you guys requested to ask for permission to go to the Feywild. It was completely burned. There were corpses everywhere. There were, what? That, that's the glade that burned? And I look over at Sal. Sal is averting his eyes. Oh, God. We, I mean, we druids, at least Archdruid, Halea, and other druids are trying to, trying to regrow. It's going to take a long time. Salvador swallows visibly. Mel looks up and she goes, how long ago did it happen? I thought, I had assumed from Sal that it, it had been a long time ago. Is this recent? Uh, Katar, it would have been about um, two years ago now. It's been about okay. two years since it was burned. Yeah, so he's going to be like, mm, about mm, the last time I saw Ariazi, so two years, give or take. Well, is can we still get into the Feywild? Salvador immediately says yes. Katar was like very surprised by that answer. He's like, well, that was what I was getting to. I was asked more like force but you know she's the archdruid it's fine um by archdruid halia to ask for your help salvador um he is still keeping his eyes on his lap and he says i you have to understand there is nothing that i want more than to go straight back to the glade and start the process of regrowing everything that i've lost but we're sort of in a tight situation right now. You know, the end of the world. Hmm. He says, Listen, I know it must have been jarring to see the Anarin Glade uh, in the state that it was. It, it kills me too, more than I can put into words. But please know that if it's the last thing I do in my lifetime, I will restore the Glade to what it was. Even if I have to do it alone with my bare hands, the Anarin Glade will be renewed. Well, you won't have to do it alone. Ariasis will help. Uh, what? <laughs> I, I if I could, is what she means to say. Ariasis like, I don't think you understand how this, uh, this glade works. He says, yeah, Druid, you talk to plants. He says that the trees are burned, the, the, the unicorn run befouled by ash, but the primary method of egress into the Feywild was a f was the fairy ring, which fire can't destroy. So yes, we should be able to get through to the Feywild. Katar we just sort of like nods and is like, if you go, I would like to come too. Salvador looks up with a start and says, I wouldn't ask you to come with us into the Feywild. I, I would. <laughs> and I was like, oh, really? Because me. Because yeah. I, I will if you won't. <laughs> I, 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 Sal's very shy, but I would like you to come. Thank you, please, yes. Still, like, in good faith, uh, uh, Sal says, Katar, you know that the Feywild is very dangerous. It's enough to put our lives on the line for this, but it would be irresponsible of us to demand the help of anyone else. You're not demanding my help. Think of it more as uh, after finding out that my daughter was in the Shadowfell, I'm not letting her go by herself. Salvador looks sideways at Ariazis. Ariazis <laughs> just like, Dad. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> I'm a big druid, stop! Salvador sort of fidgets and says, Well, I can't stop you, and I know the most dangerous place in the world to be is between a parent and their child, so. He there. sort of like smiles and is like, "Excellent, great, let's go now." Salvador, he was like, he, like there's there's a lot of air in him that deflates all at once. Like he was not looking forward to this. This is the last thing he wants to do, even though he knows he has to do it. I says, "Yeah, I guess let's go." Oh, I mean, unless anybody would like tea or food before uh, we leave. I don't think I could hold anything down. I feel like we should probably if if we don't do this now, I'm not going to go at all. I just. <laughs> He looks at like looks down at Nyla. It's like you got a problem with the Feywild. Wait, yes, yes. Is that not obvious? She has a problem with anything that's not the material plane, which is understandable. I don't want to go anywhere that's not Baldur's Gate, but I mean, does 
does Qatar still have the thing or did he give it to Halia? Uh, she would have let him keep it just in case Salvador wanted okay. it. Okay. And now would be a very good time to give it to him, yes. Yeah, that's why I was like, hmm. He, Qatar, like, um, you know, sort of pats Ariazi on the head, like, um, very, very parent like, and she's like, oh, man, why do you do that? Dad! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she's yeah, exactly. She's like that the epitome of just like, oh dad, why are you doing this in front of people? You're but then embarrassing she doesn't me. <laughs> yeah, exactly. She's embarrassed, but she doesn't say anything. She's like, oh, okay. I'm gonna tell now. <laughs> and um I guess he would reach into his bag or wherever he was keeping it, like I found something that you might like to see or keep. It's up to you. Um so the thing that Qatar pulled out from his bag or wherever uh is a wooden crown beset with sapphires um it it has a very natural look to it it's very druidy and when salvador sees it his face crumples and like there's a lot of pain that just lurches in his heart visibly and he says i i didn't think it would have survived it's yours he holds it out it takes salvador more strength than he thought would be required uh to reach out and take it and like you can tell there's like an internal battle of does he put it in his bag does he wear it technically it's he has inherited it because he's literally the only anarin left um eventually and with incredible hesitance he puts the crown on i want to add that instinctually katar takes a knee <laughs> uh what the fuck is going on? Salvador, uh, he, like, he's used, like, uh, he's used to this kind of thing. Like, anytime anyone ever visited him, uh, he would always, someone would always bend the knee. But he says, Qatar, there's really no need for that. I, under the circumstances, I'm barely the Glade, the Glade King at all. So let's just try to get through this. The, the what? The fucking what? Um, Salvador. So Wayne takes this opportunity to really quickly, like, pull Nihil aside and remind her, you know, remember, Katara was going to talk to them. They were basically elven royalty. Like, they're the guardians of the glade, clearly. Oh, God! <laughs> yeah! Katara, like, looks at Nihil and is like, Salvador is the last living Anarin. Salvador's like, well, yay. Alright, well, let's just... Can we just go, please? Yep. Katara gets up and is like, I'm ready whenever anybody else is. Where did I put the dis- item description for, um... Do you still have the, um... The Glade Queen's crown description? Yes, I do. I can't fucking find it. I know I have it. Okay, do you want me to copy-paste into... <laughs> yes, Cable please. Cup, I can't or... fucking find it. Okay. There we go. Um, I guess I might as well just read it, because I guess it's sort of relevant. Uh, the wielder of this wooden crown set with sapphires becomes aware of all creatures within and up to five miles outside of the borders of the Unicorn Run Glade, regardless of where they are. This crown has six charges, which may only be expended in the Glade or in the Feywild. The wielder may exp- expend one charge as a reaction to force advantage or disadvantage on the attack roll or saving throw made by a creature they can see within 60 feet. This ability cannot be used by the on the- cannot be used on the same roll more than once. It regains 26 charges daily at dawn. Well, shit. <laughs> and normally yeah. he'd have to attune to it, but because it is inherited, it automatically he's automatically attuned to it. All right. Um. So yeah. So unless Salvador is really eager to just get on the road, because like it's like it's like ripping off a band aid, except <laughs> instead of a band aid, it's like an organ. Mm-hmm. He just really wants to just get this over with. Madeline, Madeline is in agreement. Uh. So the trip between uh. Qatar's place of residence and the Feywild also does not take very long. Um, and the it's it's pretty harrowing to see, like you can, like Sal the closer they get to the glade, the tenser Sal's shoulders get. Um, and by the time you can see the rubble, the, uh, the, the, the charred trees and the, the desiccation going up the mountainside, uh, Sal is really, he's like, he's using everything in him to keep it together. Uh, But when he comes up the mountain after seeing, and and it is horrible to see, like the, the, the forest, it's, there's barely anything left of this forest. But that said, when he comes up toward the center of what used to be the glade, uh, where most of the, uh, the buildings were, 
he he gets to see all of the druids from all the other circles. They're all making their way around. They're slowly starting to rebuild. They're starting to put new plants in. And Salvador looks kind of weak uh, at the sight of it. Like he's he's so touched and he doesn't even know what to say. Soin just reaches over and uh, puts a hand on his shoulder, just kind of a reassuring touch. Just doesn't say anything though. Uh, he sort of acknowledges her with a hand on his back and he says, before we, um, he rubs at his face, before we go uh, into the, into the Feywild, there are a couple things that I need to get. Uh, he says, like, he's normally, he wants to take you guys everywhere with him, but he's going to leave it up to you if you want to come with him. He warns you, it's going to be inside. And he points to one of the larger burned out trees that used to, you think, be a building. You can see what's left of a staircase going around the outside wrapping around the trunk, spiraling up into the canopy. And Nyla steps up and she says, Sally, we're here for you through anything. Even even the, the hardest stuff. Sal manages something resembling a smile. It's not quite a smile, but it's almost a smile. Mm -hmm. uh, he heads uh, into the tree where there are a lot of people crossing back and forth. Uh, this used to be the seat of the Glade Queen, um, and so it's getting a lot of attention. Uh, he heads into a, one anonymous little room around a corner, up a set of stairs. Uh, everything is burnt to a crisp, but he manages to find a small wooden chest. Uh, he, it, with some difficulty because it has the metal has sort of um, melted in places. He manages to pry it open, uh, and the contents on the inside are mostly intact. He pulls out a set of um, studded leather armor. Oh. Uh, which he is going to wear for himself. Dang. Uh, he sets Sal that as well. wearing armor? Yeah, wow, you've never know. seen Salvador wearing armor before, so this <laughs> is kind of a lot. Uh, and he also pulls out um, two sickles, Ooh. Uh, which he sets um, on top of the pile. Uh, and then he pauses at the sight of something at the very bottom of the crate, and he says, Hey, Nyla? Yeah? Do you know how to use whips? Yes. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> so, Nyla, you have gotten a new weapon. Yes. Because it's about time you got an upgraded weapon. <laughs> uh, it is called Snarl. Oh uh, my god. It's a finesse weapon. It's a, it has a range of 10 feet. It's a plus two magical weapon. It does 2d4 plus two slashing damage. If on a successful hit, the wielder of Snarl exceeds the target's AC by five or more and the target is size large or smaller, the wielder may choose to entangle the target, restraining them until the target is able to make a successful DC 14 strength saving throw. To maintain this effect, the wielder must have one hand on Snarl and cannot deal damage with it. And this effect may be broken if the target fails a concentration check upon taking damage. This is amazing. <laughs> He, as he's handing you this whip, Nyla, he says, this belonged to my mother. Oh, Lord. <laughs> he says, oh, sorry. He says, no, it's fine. He says, I just ask that you use it with respect, not for the weapon itself, but for the woman who owned it. He says, my mother was the kindest person I ever knew. She was gentle, not when it was easy, but when it was hard. And I hope that you are able to embody some part of that spirit. She takes the, the whip from him and looks him in the eyes, looks up at him in the eyes and says, I promise you that I will do my best to emulate her spirit. I promise. He pats you appreciatively on the shoulder and he says, if we can get to the Feywild without anyone noticing who I am or where I'm going, I'd really like to. And right as you say that, right as he says that uh, from behind, Halia says, Katar, there you are. Nyla pushes Sal behind her. <laughs> He's like two feet taller than her. I know. I was like, <laughs> I, I, I know. <laughs> of course, Katar turns around hearing his arch druid's voice and, you know, puts a hand on his chest and bows a little bit. Uh, arch for the others, uh, arch druid Halia, a dark skinned wood elf, uh, very severe, uh, a little older, but although the elves. They show no sign of physical age, uh, but you can tell Selwyn and Ariazis yeah. because you grew up around elves. You can just, you just know, like she's got the age in her eyes and everything. And she says, I trust this means, she kind of glances past Katar and uh, Salvador is kind of making the face like, oh, here we go. Um, yeah, I guess that he will 
yeah, be like, it was as I suspected. And Archduke Julia, this is Salvador, Anarin. Uh, and... Arch Archduke Julia immediately hobbles over toward him. Well, she doesn't hobble. She, she I, I like. I like to imagine her as an older woman, but like I know that elves don't age, uh, <laughs> or at least not physically. Uh, so she just uh, maybe she's got like a like a bum knee or something like that. I was like, give the elf a cane. <laughs> Yeah, she, the, the elf has a cane. It's official. It's canon now. Yeah, Arch, there we go. and Halia is leaning on her walking her her quarterstaff like a walking stick, uh, and she goes over and she says, "Hmm, the last time I saw you, you were only a babe." And Salvador says, "Nice to meet you." She kind of looks him over. He's like, "I don't know. He's kind of skinny. I don't know if he can manage it on his own." <laughs> Salvador's like, "Uh, thanks. Wait, no, not thanks." <laughs> Katara's like trying to hide a laugh behind uh his hand and then Ariazi's just like oh <laughs> Salvador says like I suppose it doesn't matter whether or not it looks like I can take this up on my own I have to this is my lot this is my inheritance and I'll make the same promise to you that I made to Qatar I will see this glade rebuilt uh, and Archdruid Hulia kind of sniffs and says well at least you haven't given up immediately that's a plus she says well, the good news is you won't have to do it alone. Every circle from the high forest is here, and we're all going to help you see this through. Uh, Salvador looks very humbled, and he inclines his head respectfully to the Archdruid, and she says, now Don't you have some end of the world shit or something to get to? Katar was sort of vague. Ariazi's like, yeah, it's because he's boring. Hell yeah, we do! I don't know that I'm that excited about the end of the world saving shit. Definitely not, but I am excited to use this whip, so. <laughs> yeah, I was, like, when I was trying, to, I was trying to reconcile, like, a weapon that a druid would, that an arch druid would use, and one that, um, a, 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 a rogue would like, and then I was like, well, the, the list of simple weapons is, oh my god, there's whips. <laughs> <laughs> and the rest is history. Because clearly <laughs> she got all about the conversation we had about, you know, Selwyn and whips and all of this nonsense. Oh yeah, well, anyway, Selwyn your kinks are your kinks. <laughs> yeah man keep that with you and the wearing queen in the bedroom yeah like whatever you guys whatever freaky shit you guys do we don't all know about it yeah i can't give selwyn a whip <laughs> selwyn's clearly a bottom so yeah, oh, yeah. a top in this campaign no <laughs> service sub all the way exactly right deeply uh, upsetting deeply upsetting <laughs> <laughs> um so yes um archdrew and halia uh sort of escorts you escorts the entire party uh, back through the burned out shell of this glade. And as she walks, people definitely start capital N noticing. Oh, uh, whispers uh, start to follow you as you all make your way around what used to be a nice flagstone path um, and up to a small pond that has run black with ash. As we're walking, uh, Nyla's like next to Sal. She's like, Sal, I can turn you invisible if you want. It's really easy. I can just do it. You don't. Salvador don't says, to... I, there's no point in running from this, Nyla. One way or the other, this is my inheritance. And they've already seen him. <laughs> you and and also, have... they already know what I look like. I'm kind <laughs> of royalty. Suppose that's fair. I'm just saying, if you just, if you need to be invisible, just let, just like us, there's a hand signal. Just, you know, anyway, scratch your ear. Okay, great. Good talk. What if I actually need to scratch my ear? Well, then you're going to go invisible, so don't do that. <laughs> this is a bad plan. <laughs> is that is already gone. Um, so Halia walks you to the edge of this pond and she says, you're sure this is still going to work? Uh, and Salvador nods. He nudges, um, uh, a small mushroom uh, at the growing at the edge of this wa of the of the pond with his boot, and he says, "The water has been fouled, but the fairy ring, it survives regardless. So if you guys, if there's anything that you need to do last minute in the prime material plane, now's your chance to do it." And he starts uh, donning his uh, studded leather armor. Oh boy! And he attaches those two sickles uh, to. To uh, to his his belt, which is another weird thing you've never seen Salvador do. You've never seen <laughs> yeah, him have weapons. a weapon. Dangerous armored magical pay. Right. This is very 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 bizarre. And yes, I already have the stats for these for these <laughs> weapons. Of course you do. Naturally. 
Uh, they are called. Um, they have names. They're called Smoke and Storm. That's oh. really cool. That's super cool. Yeah, now we'll be all into that shit. Is there any? What should we expect? Should, now that turns to Qatar. So, just is there anything we can do to prepare for what's going to be in the Feywild? I'm very nervous about being in the Feywild. Uh, Qatar, have you ever been in the Feywild? I'll leave this as a as a character decision. Um, I'll say pr- at least once. Like it's not. A, a place that he would like if you go, if he had gone there he would not like want to go back there unless it's for also, example it's also the daughter... kind of place you can go to accidentally right exactly mm-hmm. right. Um, it's not the kind of place that he would want to go to unless you know for example his daughter had a habit of running into danger and he's like god damn it <laughs> um but you but qatar you would definitely know that salvador almost certainly has been to the feywild probably a couple times right so um he's gonna look at nyla and be like i was there one time it's very dangerous uh but if you want to know more details i'm sure that he hesitates like not sure what to, how to refer to sal and he's like salvador would know more weird never heard people say his full name before anyway uh sure sal what do what do i what do we have to expect like salvador should is- i have a weapon out should i be Salvador is tugging the straps on his armor uh, tight, and he says, We'll be going through uh, this, this fairy ring into the Feywild equivalent of the Anarin Glade. So he says, It's mostly safe, just, you know, be on your guard. The uh, This glade has a queen of its own, and uh, let's just say she's a little more tempestuous than my mother. Excellent. Oh, good. Uh, Nyla pulls her daggers. He says no. He he like oh, no. he puts your dagger. It's like no, put the daggers away. You don't want to offend no. her. Which is oh okay. Yeah. Our eyes is like no no no. <laughs> no Bad daggers. Plan. Bad plan. Okay, this is gonna end badly. I'm just gonna not talk. Let's go. Uh, Salvador is the first one through. Uh, he steps over the edge of the fairy ring and into the water, and immediately uh, starts wading into the depths. I don't like the look of the water, but Sal's going in, so I'm gonna follow after. I told him thick or thin I'd be there. Katar is gonna push Ariazi after you. <laughs> She's like, God damn it, Dad! Okay, fine. <laughs> and then he's gonna follow her. Nyla's definitely going last, and as she like looks around and like one last look at the prime material plane, like, I'm gonna miss you. <laughs> Uh, so you wade into this water, and it's a very strange sensation. Uh, you definitely feel the water, and it is very ashy and black. Uh, and it's kind of it smells, you know. Uh, but the deeper you go, right as you take a breath and plunge your head under in the deepest part of the lake, uh, you are suddenly being you are suddenly plunging back out from the other side, like your hair, like your head is just coming up over the surface. Uh, and suddenly you are on a much, you are in a much cleaner lake. Uh, the water is very, is crystal clear, flowing past you in easy, delicate streams. Uh, Salvador is the first out. Um, you aren't even wet and you're not even sure how that's possible. Uh, but this forest is unbelievable. It is so beautiful. It doesn't even look real. It beggars belief. The trees are, uh, They've got to be at least 200 feet tall, and they have these long vines, each of which is coated in multicolored flowers, all falling down from the from the branches. There's bird song coming from everywhere, all different kinds of song. Uh, and it is it's like someone turned the saturation up on this plane, right? Like everything is so bright and so vibrant. It's almost hard to look at. But wow, was it ever beautiful? <laughs> well, that's a nice change from all of the death and ash remember this place is going to amplify any emotion emotionality that you feel so try to be careful and he gestures around him to what looks like a mostly like it's a beautiful forest but there doesn't seem to be anything in it and he says welcome to the pixie queen's glade oh no pixie queen great Nyla's wearing like all gray and black too (laughs) Even the grays and blacks seem more vibrant somehow. Oh my God. <laughs> wow. The, the, par- the purple that makes up the black really pops. Well, so where to? We gotta find the vestige. He says, I don't know where the 
I've never, I'd never even heard of the world pillars before this whole mess started. And he says, and I don't know where it might be in the Feywild. And the only person I can think to ask, uh, and Salvador looks up. Okay. Okay. What's up? What's up? Yeah. What's up? Yeah. Everybody like what? It looks up. You all glance up and you hadn't noticed it before, but swarming through the canopy of trees are what must be a thousand thousand tiny dancing golden lights um, all swirling around and past each other. It is the most unbelievably ecstatically beautiful thing any of you have ever seen. It's like the stars are bur- are alive in these trees. That's gorgeous. She says it's the Pixie Queen's kingdom. So, oh god, do we have to ask the Pixie Queen? He says, oh. well, I can beg audience with her. Um, as an Anorin, I should be able to get her maybe hopefully uh and right as he is saying that something flitters down this unbelievably t- it's it well size tiny first of all size tiny um it flitters down uh and it's one of these golden um these golden orbs of light it's shedding this golden dust wherever it flies and it hovers right in front of your face nyla ah oh, hello there nyla. Uh, hello Small thing. How are you? Kariazi's like nudges Nyla like. I'm very well. It's so nice to meet you. My name is Tanera. Tanera. It's lovely to meet you too. What's your name? It is. She like looks at Sal and she goes, it's Nyla. It's so wonderful to meet you, Nyla. Welcome to the Pixie Queen's kingdom. You hear a whole bunch of chittering laughter from above you. Very joyful. Like they're laughing at me. <laughs> it's more like they're laughing at life being so wonderful. Oh god, this is the worst. <laughs> Nyla's favorite thing. She's like, fuck, I want to go back to the Shadowfell. I hate it. <laughs> um, Nyla like looks at her and she goes, well, it's it's so lovely to be, you know, this is our first time here. And it's just, you know, you, you got a lovely kingdom going on. So kudos. Well, thank you. That is so nice of you to say. You're You're welcome. Um, she hugs you. Shape? She hugs your face. <laughs> she hugs all, my face. She hugs your face. <laughs> she's tiny. She's like that's all she can. That's all she can hug. She can it fit takes, in the palm of your hand. It takes every ounce of Nyla's willpower to not slap this thing off of her. <laughs> <laughs> like you can see her visibly clenching her fist. So and we put like a hand on her shoulder just to hold her, but hold her in place. She's, you can do she's this. She's frantically looking between Sal and Ariazes and uh, Selwyn, like. What? What do I do? <laughs> I just give you the kind of like roll with it symbol. <laughs> uh, Salvador finally, like he's desperately trying not to laugh because this is the funniest thing he's ever seen all day. <laughs> of course. Uh, but he approaches and he says, uh, Tanera, my name is Salvador Anarin. He says, I'm here from the Prime Material Plane on very important business. The pixie finally detaches from your face, Nyla. Oh god. Do I have <laughs> glitter on me now? You actually do have a thin coating of fairy dust god um, damn it. on your face. Uh, and Salvador uh, the, the pixie turns and addresses Salvador. Says, oh, an anorin. She flits up to Salvador's face and says, oh yes, you look like an anorin. You've all been really caught up in staring around because like this place is breathtakingly beautiful. It Mm -hmm. is preternaturally beautiful. It is so beautiful. It doesn't even look like it should exist. And you're all really caught up in staring at that. And when Salvador finally talks and you all look at him, you realize that he has transformed almost completely. His skin is a lot paler, but notably his hair is now blue and frosted with white tips, literally frosted. There is literally frost at the ends of his hair. His eyes are now a very striking frosty blue. What happened to Sal? I think it's a it's a uh, Eladrin thing. Katar just looks and goes, "Oh, <laughs> I didn't know that half Eladrin could do that." The pixie says, "Yes, you certainly have the look of of an Adarin." I suppose I'll have to go see if the pixie queen will want to speak to you. Please, come. Come with me. And she immediately flits off and it's impossible to track her. Yeah, like, how are we going to follow you? We can't fucking fly. Well, I mean. <laughs> Nyla's like, well, how do we... How, you're going too fast. We're just going to stay here, I guess. Salvador um, looks over at you, Nyla, and he grins. And he sort of... Um, 
it's an interesting, it looks like he's reaching out to slap you. <laughs> uh, he lightly pats the side of your face and he knocks some of the dust free from your cheek and suddenly you are under the effects of the spell Fly. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> Motherfucking what? <laughs> she can fly, she can fly, she can fly. <laughs> I know. I was like, oh my god, it's Peter Pan. <laughs> he says, Welcome to the Fey Wild, Nyla. <laughs> this is This is amazing. <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> That's the effects of Pixie Dust, or one of the effects of Pixie Dust. It's actually quite varied. Nyla like is doing fucking cartwheels in the air. <laughs> I don't know what the effects of fly spell are. Can I do cartwheels in the air? I probably can't do cartwheels in the air. <laughs> yeah, probably. Um, How like long I... does this last, actually? I'm concerned. I just occurred to me that I might... You touch a willing creature, the target gains a flying speed of 60 feet for the duration. When the spell ends, the target falls as if it is still aloft unless it can stop the fall. Uh, so yeah, you can, just fl- you can just fly now. Excellent. Nyla starts flying. She's like, guys, you gotta try this. You gotta the duration, by the way, the duration, by the way, is 10 minutes. <laughs> Nyla, be be cautious there. No, never. Caution is for suckers. Caution is for suckers and people who don't want to gain any money. What? Caution what? is for poor people. Oh, okay, Nyla. I didn't know that you were so bougie. <laughs> this is what happens when you have 400 and something gold in your pocket. Oh. <laughs> Salvador is smi- like he is smiling for the first time in a while, and it's still sort of a maudlin smile. This is a, mm. sort of, kind of a, a slow, a slow, sad smile. Uh, and a couple minutes later, the same pixie Tanera flies back and says, "I just remembered that none of you can fly. Oh, the little one can fly!" And she immediately starts <laughs> flying around beside you, doing cartwheels in the air with you. I was like, uncharacteristically, oh Nyla is having an amazing time <laughs> and is, is joyfully cackling, cartwheeling with this pixie. Yeah. Uh, the pixie giggles for a while, and um, a pixie that had accompanied her back, a male pixie, uh, says, Tanero, we must be diligent. She says, oh, right. Uh, she flies over to Katar first and sort of da- and sort of pats him on the top of the head with a little bit of pixie dust, and suddenly Katar can fly as well. Yeah. And she she does the same for Ariazis, and then Selwyn, and then finally Salvador. <laughs> and she says, come, come. And she flits up into the sky. Nyla takes off at full speed. Nyla, uh, Salvador follows you a little more sedately. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, being up in the bra- in the boughs of this tree is even more unbelievably beautiful than it was from the ground. Uh, the the little points of starlight you can see are actually little pixies crossing here and there, shedding pixie dust. The entire, every single branch and leaf has been sort of covered in this semi-transparent golden pixie dust. Everything mm-hmm. glitters, and every there's like this unearthly beautiful humming coming from everywhere breathtakingly beautiful i cannot like i want to drive this really home this is the prettiest fucking place any of you have ever seen right uh and tanera guides you um through twisting boughs um around trees and finally toward the upper part of the canopy in a large um in one of the larger trees in the woods uh where it looks like there is a whole pixie guard uh, stationed around uh, this one little uh, carved, carved in section of this, the trunk of this tree, uh, where in a tiny, tiny throne uh, sits a beautiful golden skinned fairy uh, with long black hair uh, and a very beautiful dress, although it's kind of difficult to see unless you're really getting up close and really looking at her. And Tanera says, This is Pixie Queen Mora. Mel right. looks around the rest of you and says, I should not be talking. Oh, right. Oh, great. Um, Selene just gives a good curtsy. I mean, you are flying. Yeah, Yeah. right. As as much as you can. If anybody can manage a curtsy while flying, I'd like to think. A wizard. uh, I'm pretty dexterous. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Salvador, figuring he probably has the best political clout with the Pixie Queen, um, flies forward and inclines his head politely. Uh, and he says, Pixie Queen, it's been, it's been quite a while. Uh, the Pixie Queen um, doesn't, well, she doesn't stand. She uh, flutters up from her seat uh, and kind of closes the distance between her and Salvador. And she looks very intently at his face. She starts flying around his head in these elaborate circles. And she says, young Prince Salvador, I don't think I've ever seen you in your winter state. Whatever's wrong. 
Um, does... Katar probably doesn't have to roll. Katar probably knows. Um, but yeah. I would like the rest of you to roll either Arcana or Nature, whichever is higher. Um, okay, so that was a 19, a 22, and a 14. Arias is at the lowest. Um, yeah, that's I, funny. Uh, yeah, so uh, you kind of only figure it out by context Ariazis, uh given the situation and everything but uh nyla and selwain um you have learned enough about the nature of elves and the nature of the feywild uh that you know that eladrin uh a sh- well a full eladrin would shift completely uh change completely depending on their mood uh each there are four different primary states summer spring fall and winter and each of them represents a particular state of mind or a mood that an Eladrin is in. Uh, spring is all about um, joviality. Autumn is all about generosity and compassion. Summer is all about sort of vengeful... Passion? Yeah, passion. Um, and winter is all about sorrow and grief. Uh, so yes, she is saying that she's never seen Salvador in his grieving state before. Oh... Hmm. That uh, looks sad. <laughs> uh, and Salvador just sort of smiles balefully at her, and he says, "I'm afraid there's. If you want, if you want the full explanation to that pixie queen, I'm afraid I'm going to have to tell you to travel through the fairy ring yourself. And I'm afraid I don't have time. We're on a very dangerous mission, and the short story is that we need to know where the Fey Pillar is. Uh, and." Pixie Queen Mora kind of cans her head to one side, and as she does, like, all this golden dust sheds off her hair. And she says, Oh, I don't think I've ever heard of the Fey Pillar. She says, What? What is the nature of this artifact? It's, Who else is uh... going to answer? Nyla elbows Selwyn. Yeah, um, <laughs> magic shit. <laughs> it's a, um, highly powerful, uh, artifact, uh, from very, very long ago. There were three. Uh, one here, one in the Shadowfell, and one in the Material Plane. And um, they were from when they were the only three planes that existed. The Pixie Queen flutters over toward you. She's right up in your face because that's the only place she can really no, t- that's fair. speak to you and be heard. Uh, she sort of inspects your face and she says, And what's your name? Selwain. It's very good to meet you, Selwain. Welcome to my kingdom. It's a beautiful kingdom, my lady. Oh, thank you. She, she sort of, her wings flutter like she's very susceptible to flattery, clearly. <laughs> <laughs> and she says, thank you. We do take pride in our beauty. Uh, and she flits over uh, to Ariazes and she says, oh my goodness, I don't think I've ever seen one of your kind before. Oh. Uh. Hello, you know, Hello. I, haven't, I haven't seen one of my kind either before either. I said either twice. Hi. Hello, <laughs> she says again. She reaches up and she pokes one of your horns just very lightly and it gets covered in golden dust. Narias is like, okay. <laughs> I like your horns very much. She's like really flustered and is like, oh, uh, thank you. Um, point of order, has the moss grown back or is it still gone? No, no. She's never let it grow back. It's just now her horns are out and open. Which is awesome. Yeah. Metaphors. Yeah, right? Metaphors. <laughs> um, the pixie queen says, you are all very welcome in my kingdom. And like, you can, Salvador has this kind of size. Like, you get the feeling that she does this a lot. Like, she starts asking questions of her guests and then completely forgets why why her guests are <laughs> What were we here, here for? Mm-hmm. And Salvador says, um, my queen? She says, oh, right. What was the question? He says, the Fey Pillar? She says, oh, right. I'm afraid that for all of our beauty, our kingdom is not very wise in the ways of magic. All of the magic that we understand comes from within ourselves, not from artifacts. And she kind of puts one hand delicately against her cheek in in thought. She says, well, she looks a little hesitant for a moment. And she says, the only place I could think of to go to learn about the ways of magic of the world she says, oh, I don't know. It might be too dangerous for you to go there. We're very fond of danger. We're, we get into it all the time. <laughs> Katar looks at Nyla like, oh, dear God. Salvador <laughs> says, I think it's more fair to say that danger is very fond of us. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> Tends to follow us around. 
She says, well, they are very powerful, but also quite evil and quite malevolent. But if you manage to bargain with them or trade them for something that they want, I think, well, she looks hesitant. The coven may know. And then all at once, this whispering breaks out from the crowd. <gasps> the coven, the coven. You know, every every single pixie is all muttering to themselves at once about this coven. The coven? Does anybody, has anyone heard yeah, of it? Yeah, I was like, looking around at the group. Can Qatar roll? Because I don't think Ariazis would know, but. Uh, Qatar could roll plus nature or arcana, whichever is higher for him. Okay. Hey, hey. Uh, but a 21 uh, will do it, yeah. Um, so Qatar... There are, a, like, coven is a sort of a generic term in a lot of mm-hmm. ways. Um, you know, there are some cults that call themselves covens, but the most common use of the word coven is for hags. Mm. Um, a coven of hags uh, would be, yeah, they would they would be able to have they would have access to a lot of powerful divination magic, for example. Uh, they would be able to contact beings on other planes to get answers to questions that they needed. Uh, But hags are, they are bad news. They are known for a whole bunch of nasty, nasty business, uh, including kidnapping and eating children, Mm -hmm. um, impregnating young wayward women with hags. Uh, Yeah, it's, um, they're bad news. Yeah, he also, like, inhale like takes in in a breath and is like is there no other place she's uh glade queen mora approaches katar sort of sorrowfully and she says like i said for all of our beauty we our kingdom is not particularly wise the only magic we understand comes from the magic within us if it's the magic of the world that you seek you'll have to find someone who knows more i don't think we have much of a choice is there could you point us in a direction, my lady? You've been a such great assistance, but and I hate to ask more. She, her wings flutter again. She's so susceptible to praise. <laughs> this is so funny. <laughs> and you can swear she blushes gold, maybe. She's like, oh dear. <laughs> she says, well, I know that the coven currently exists near the city of Everspring. Um, and Salvador, he doesn't need to roll. He knows where that is. He immediately says to you, that's the um, Feywild equivalent of um, Neverwinter. Mm. Uh, and she says well if you need to get there head northwest out of the high forest and cross the misty moor and then turn due west through the forest and onto the coast everspring will be hard to miss look for the coven on the foot of the cliff on which everspring is perched just to the north but be careful a hag is dangerous enough but a whole coven of them have brought cities down in the past we will take your wise words to heart my queen she giggles and boops your nose (laughs) (laughs) excellent that was great um i have one last question for you and i and no we're imposing way too much but just i cannot help it do you possibly know what they might want in trade have you heard any rumors do you know she says oh well knowing hacks nothing very good if one of you would be willing to carry a child for them and salvador's like absolutely Uh -uh. no listen we'll we'll find Something. Something. Yeah. <laughs> Something. Like, I've considered surrogacy before. Uh, <laughs> so I was like, what? You know what? Never mind. I don't want to know. Yeah, that's, that's <laughs> not the place to unpack that. <laughs> Nyla bows deeply to the queen and turns to the rest of you. Like, do we have any other questions? Nope. Just Qatar, like, looking at Ariazi. He's like, I'm very glad that I came. And she's like, you're the only one. <laughs> Dad, this Salvador's like I'm kind of glad he came. I mean, so. yeah, right. <laughs> so yeah, he's like he like whispers and well, I mean, he can understand. He's like, why didn't you tell me the cell was so hot? I I don't. And he's and then she's like, oh oh the blue. Oh, okay, I see. I get it. Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> well, that's creepy. Nice. Learning everything about everybody's kinks tonight. And she's like, oh, okay, yeah, the blue hair and the, and the frost and the, mm, okay, now I get it. All right, all right, Dad. <laughs> the pixie queen says, well, you are absolutely welcome to stay the night here with us. We have rooms for big folk up in the highest canopies. Thank you. You're oh, so goodness. welcome. She goes over and boops you on the nose, too. <laughs> 
the better to see the sunrise, right? Well, you'll have to be a little adventurous, but sure. <laughs> uh, so she shows you all up. And because they are for the big folk, everything is sort of bare. Like, how are they going to make a mattress? You know, like they're right, pixies. They're like a foot <laughs> they're tall. They're tiny, yeah. Uh, but they're nice. Like they're all carved. Um, it's they're made from like long bending boughs uh, that are tied together onto the upper upper limbs of the tree, and everything is just glittering with this golden dust. It's so fucking pretty up here. <laughs> uh, and you all um, make it to the top um, right as a couple minutes before the uh, the spell the fly spell wears off. It only lasts ten minutes, and Salvador's like, "We left Sassy on the ground." Salvador says. Oh, oh shit! Uh oh! Oh no! And so actually, we here. left we left Stormy on the ground too. Right. Mm-mm. I was like, I forgot about Stormy. I didn't. And after you all are settled into these unbelievably breathtakingly beautiful quarters, uh, suffused in golden dust, uh, Seldor is going to approach Qatar. Uh, he's going to try to keep it on the DL because he doesn't want Ariazis to know that he's talking about this. <laughs> um, but he um approaches Qatar, and he's also just nervous because. He's Sal. He doesn't know how to turn off the gay. And he right. says, Katar, there's something you should know. Oh. He says, back in Waterdeep a couple nights ago, your daughter got into a very emotionally bruising fight with Selwyn. She does tend to get into fights, though, with Selwyn. I've never heard anything like that before. It was a new experience for me, too. I don't like seeing them fight. And at the risk of making it worse, I think if there's anyone qualified to intervene, it would probably be you. I feel like he pauses and he says, they both hurt each other a lot. And I don't think a fatherly presence would go in this. Hmm. You're right. I can see how that might help. Obviously, I know my daughter better than Selene, but we are both elves. That should help, (laughs) maybe. He says, all right, well, I just wanted you to know, um, know, I don't like seeing either of them in pain, but I feel like I'm kind of out of my depth here. Yes, I'm glad that you brought that up to me and also glad that I decided to come with you so that I could help her. I know that she likes to think that she's an adult but she's not she's learning she is hopefully it seems like you've had a good effect i have to go he immediately leaves (laughs) (laughs) katara's just like okay (laughs) and that's a good place i'm too gay (laughs) right (laughs) Salvador, uh, like, gr- he, Salvador is, like, grieving. He's in, like, the worst place ever in the, he's ever been, but also he's still extremely gay and he can't handle this. He can't handle being complimented by someone who's very hot, so he has to go. Right. Hey, friends. It's your favorite DM, Tessa Crowley. Can't wait for the next episode? Good news, you can join our Discord server to download episodes and pre-release, weeks before anyone else, at bit.ly slash cfcdiscord. If you want more information on the show, character sheets, and social media links, head to our website, critfail.club or critfailclub.com. Full episodes are available on our YouTube channel, bit.ly slash cfcchannel, and wherever you get your podcasts. No, I thought for some reason, I thought the sound just like was turned off. I was like, it's <laughs> no, it's just Val executive dysfunction special. It's fun. Yeah, no. Yeah, wait, I want to hear what all of ours, all of our ticks are that you have to edit out. God, I, it is so I weird. Know, it's probably like incessant giggling because I know that's my thing. Uh, no, yours is, you have this like one really, actually you and Kay both have like one really specific kind of laugh that I always have mm-hmm. to edit out. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like normal is. laughs are fine. I leave normal laughs in all the time. <laughs> but we have a weird laugh you have like, you have know. one both of you have one really weird laugh that i have to edit okay. out yeah well there we go <laughs> there we now it's all out in the open i'm gonna go i'm gonna like listen it's, a, it's okay mine is the uh thing that i do when i'm thinking oh 